O gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you, Lord Father, for your presence, Lord. We thank you for gathering us together tonight, Lord Father, in your precious name, Lord. We pray that your blessing be upon your people tonight, Lord. We pray that you bless this time, this session, Lord. We, Lord, take to, to study your word, Father. Lord, we pray that you bless your people, Lord, as we uh, study together, Lord Father, as we learn together of you, Father. May your presence come down a special way. Bless each one. Lord Father, have your prayer tonight. In Jesus, let me pray and ask it. Amen and amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Let's give him praise tonight. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Let the rain of your presence fall on me. Oh, my friends don't lie. 
like me because I am walking with the king every day. I am walking with the king. with a prayer. We have a prayer request from Sister Juliet for Dina Parmasa for depression, deliverance, salvation. Let's bow as Father God, we thank you for your presence. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your mercy that gives us this opportunity to gather together. And I pray, dear God, that Lord, your presence will come in a special way. And Lord, this request for Dina Parmasa that you would heal her out of that depression, Lord, and deliver her and save her father of god may she come to know you oh god with through your blood lord with through the cross lord may she have an experience of your love coming to her in jesus name i ask it and i be approach your word tonight may you bless us in the service at this time of of study in your word may you be with us in a special way in jesus name i ask it amen and amen god bless you and thank you so much for being here with us um we know that there are more restrictions and we just have to work with, uh, you know, what we have, and we just thank God for His love. 
Okay, we just got another prayer request. Please pray for my colleague, Jay Peters, who is presently working at Coover Hospital, that God would grant her peace in her spirit and continued protection. So let's bow ahead one more time. This is from Donna K. Clark. Um, Father God, I pray for Jay Peters, Lord, a colleague of Donna K. in the hospital, Father. Lord, we know the stress that is upon the nurses, the doctors, and everyone else, dear Father God, we pray that your peace and love would surround Peters in a special way tonight. And Jason, we ask it. Amen and amen. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. I want to really appreciate, I'm going to appreciate uh, what Brother Isaac has shared with us. Our uh, last two um, uh, 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 Bible teaching about talent and treasure and some time. And truly, I was thinking, I was talking to my wife, sharing with her how, you know, everything to us is on loan. And many times we don't see that. We tend to say we have this and we own this and so on, but everything is on loan. Our wives, our husbands, our children, our jobs, our own life. All that we have is on loan. We are already stewards of God's grace. Stewards mean that we are accountable and responsible for what is placed in our hands. Gifts and talents. Just think tonight, whatever gift you're born with, whatever gift you have, engineer, architect, doctor, lawyer, doesn't matter what talent you have. That talent come from somewhere. That talent come from God. And God give you the ability to earn, to learn, to study, to serve him, to love him, to appreciate him. And he values your response. He values your response. And tonight, I have something I'd like to share with you tonight. And um, uh, it's uh, the sower, the seed, the ground. That's what I want to share with you tonight. Last Sunday, we had a stream service about they that wait upon the Lord, showing you their strength. And uh, in such a time as this, you can't be anxious. You can't be, uh, you know, wanting this to happen right away and wanting it to happen fast. You just have to wait and be patient. And this will continue along that vein tonight. So if you have your Bibles, I'd like you to turn to Genesis chapter 1. We want to read from 11 to 12. So keep your Bible nearby. We have some scriptures and we want to go straight into tonight and see how the Lord will lead. So it's the sower, the seed, the ground. Genesis chapter 1, reading from verse 11. And God said, let the earth bring forth grass, the herb yielding seed, and the fruit tree yielding fruit after its kind, whose seed is in itself upon the earth, and it was so. And the earth brought forth grass and the herb yielding seed, and it was so. And, and the earth brought forth grass and herb yielding seed after its kind, and the tree yielding fruit, whose seed was in itself after its kind, and God saw that it was good. And lower down to 26, verse 26, and God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness, let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fall of the air, over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created man in his own image, in the image of God created him, male and female created them, and God blessed them. And God said unto them, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth, subdue it, have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over every living thing that moved upon the earth. Now notice, notice here that God, when God give a command or give a pronouncement, he covers the end from the beginning. He actually give them the whole scope, which was to be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth, subdue it, have dominion over every living thing that moved upon the earth. So that was a full comprehensive view of Adam to be God over the earth. But they had was to wait for further revelation of how this is to unfold. And this is what we get from what Brother Branham shared. So I'll be uh, splicing in scriptures with what the prophet shared. And he said, now when God made every seed after its kind, so that was a law God put there. Seed after its kind. So there's a kind of seed and every seed supposed to stay in its own channel and reproduce itself. And there was nothing like him, God, was a spirit. So therefore God made man his own image. Or well, hear these words. 
God made every seed after its kind. Then when he made man in his image, it was a seed of his word. But Jesus was made flesh. He, the flesh of the word of God. And when we receive the word of God, then we become God's word in our flesh. The church should be in that condition. So Adam was a seed of the word. Jesus, the flesh of the word, the word itself made flesh. So take note of that. Okay, we want to go to Genesis 3. And this is after the devil trapped Eve. We want to read from verse 9. This is Adam backslidden, Adam out of the spirit, Adam out of his position. And God calling out to Adam, the verse 9 of Genesis chapter 3 if you want to find it. And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, where thou? And as well Isaac shared with you, that's not location. That's where are you from the realm that I leave you in. And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. And he said, who told you that thou was naked? Has thou eaten of the tree whereof I commanded thee that thou should not eat? The man said, the woman whom thou givest to be with me, she gave me of the tree, and I did eat. And the Lord God said unto the woman, what is this that thou hast done? And the woman said, the serpent beguiled me, and I did eat. So they passed in the buck. Adam said, the woman, the woman said, the serpent. And the Lord said unto the serpent, because thou hast done this, thou art cursed of all cattle above every beast of the field, and this upright being, Upon thy belly shalt thou go, and dust shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. That is when he hit the dust. And this, this is the words I want to get to. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, between thy seed and her seed, and they shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. So the battle of angels not just became the battle of men, but this battle come to the flesh level in which in Genesis, they have been identified two seeds between thy seed and her seed. Thy seed meaning the serpent seed and her seed meaning from Adam. So right away, this word that is a seed, this word that is creative and God identifying this seed now on the earth in terms of a life. And then verse 16, unto the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception in sorrow and shall bring forth children and thy desire shall be to thy husband. And here it were, he said, and he shall rule over thee. And unto Adam, he said, because thou was hearkened to the voice of thy wife, as eaten of the tree of which I commanded, saying, thou shalt not eat of it, curse is the ground for thy sake, in sorrow shall thou eat of it all the days of thy life. Thorns also and thistles shall it bring forth to thee, and thou shalt eat the herb of the field. In the sweat of thy face thou shalt eat bread, till thou return unto the ground, for out of it was thou taken, dust thou art, and to dust thou shalt return. Now let's hear a little bit from Brother Brown. He said, Now Adam was not deceived, but his bride was not deceived. And he said, He gave him a bride, a type of second Adam. He gave the first Adam a bride, she fell. He gave the second Adam, Christ, a bride, she fell. She is not an original, she's a byproduct. The bride today, so-called, I'm saying so-called, is a byproduct, see? She calls herself the bride, but what she is, she is made up of a material of organization, not of the word. So much word in it to make it a kind of byproduct, to make it hypocritical. Eve believed most of the word, but she doubted one part of it. Adam bride could not wait. So she mingled her seed illegally. Do you see why I am contending for that word? Word by word? I repeat that again. Do you see why I am contending for that word? Word by word? I have told you, I believe that is God's truth. God has protected the Bible. He's got to judge the world by something through Jesus Christ, which is the word, the word made flesh. So Adam bride couldn't wait. You see, there is nothing to it. They say it's phony, watch. He says, okay, I'll back up a little bit. 
That's the way the bride today, she wants to manufacture something to say I'm adopted or I am in this position and I am that position, I have this authority. And this coronavirus flattening all these supermen and all these who are feel that power and whatnot, flatten them like pancake because God will get glory at the end of it through his bride. So it have no man to raise up to iron this and beat his chest. God would not have that. So he said, no, she wants to manufacture something. She's got to work it up on a platform. She's got to have everything. See, what is she doing? Manufacturing something. And where it's going, you can see there's nothing to it. It's a phony. If it wasn't, I'll get it back, this world would be aflame with the power of God and the church would be on fire. Oh, what? Dead would be raised and all kind of things would be taking place. So all this quiet gospel that people want to peddle because they don't have the power to manifest and they will ridicule those who are anointing and claiming and believing and expecting that this same Holy Ghost that was on Pentecost is just as real. They want to make mockery out of it, but it doesn't change the fact that God, that the prophet identified that if it was here as promised, then all kinds of things will be taking place. All kinds of things will be taking place, dead will be raised and everything else. Now, but what did she get sold up before Christ could get to her? Before he got to her to plant his own seed. Oh, so Jesus have his own seed. That's right. Where did she have? Weed seeds. She got world denominational seeds. And that's the reason why she's reaping her harvest right now. I hope that this doesn't make you upset. I hope it gets right down to the place where I trust that God has given it to you. What was she after? Wisdom. God give a commission that cannot perish. Replenish, multiply. That was God's eternal purpose. And the matter today, he says, you want some kind of phony makeup with screaming, jumping, speaking in tongues, instead of waiting, here we go, for the real word of God to be made manifest through the bride. So because many don't want to wait, people claim certain things. And what we ought to do is to anoint the promises that God made. Lord, you promised this. You promised me deliverance. You promised me a breakthrough. You promised me victory. You can't lie. Your word can't fail. You said your word can't return void. So it's an attitude of uh, placing God right on top of what he has promised. Now, you didn't promise. You didn't make the promise. It's he made the promise. He said, behold, I send you Elijah. You can say, God, you send me Elijah. I receive Elijah. I receive the message. Now oh, I want this message to be alive in me. I know I am not a child of the enemy. I'm not a super seed. I'm a child of God. And Lord, you promised me these things and I am claiming them, not only for me, but for my family. And you are blind yourself to the hot pants, the mini skirt, the smoking, the drinking, whatever negative, whatever world they're in, that has nothing to do with the promise. And I'll prove it to you tonight. Whatever condition your loved ones are in right now, right now, that has nothing to do with the promise of God. The promise is true. The promise is real. God cannot lie. Could we say amen tonight? So watch. He says, instead of waiting for the real word of God to be made manifest through the bride, then kind that takes the word is God's true bride bringing forth children. They can't die. A child the bride brings forth on the word can't die because it is the word. Did you get it? She can't die. That child can't die because he's a word child. He's a seed child. He's an eternal child. And I find that is so wonderful tonight. So you see, now watch. The seed word, here we go, cannot grow in the atmosphere then of knowledge. As soon as knowledge mixes with faith, it dies right there. Oh, I want you to see that tonight. The true seed word cannot grow in an atmosphere of knowledge. And the Bible talk about in the last days, knowledge shall increase. What we have now is the fullness of knowledge has been loosed on the earth. And the false bride or uh, the impersonator bride in a condition of knowledge claiming to be bride, that's not it. That is why the devil fight worship. The devil fight you getting in the spirit. It fight a genuine atmosphere. Even some of the songs I hear sometimes is just heavily intellectual and just words 
they fling words at, at music or fling music at words and make it a song and call it a message song. And it's just, you have to listen and hear and almost say amen to the song instead of something that is inspired by experience that, that resonate over the heart. Like in this last song, uh, some song that but again I was talking about that Isaac had to sing and the person, why the uh, children died and the wife survived and like how Dorsey talk about when his wife died and, 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 and they call him and say he was on the fields doing evangelism and they call him and say your wife died. He said, oh Lord, and somebody tell them, don't say Lord, say precious Lord. And right there, he started saying precious Lord, take my hands, lead me on and help me, let me stand. I'm tired, I'm weak, I'm worn to the storm. These are the kind of experiences and these songs that is birthed, not from intellectual pelting words on a, on a piece of paper and call it a song, not birthed in that way, but birthed from the, the experiences that people go through. These are songs that has lived through the years and they're still anointed, they're still inspired, like, like, like blind Fanny Cosby, I shall know him by the prince of the nails in his hands. Oh my, all these blood songs, there's a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's vein, where sinners plunge beneath the flood and lose all their guilty stains. All these are such inspiring songs. And when you sing them and, and play them and get in the spirit with them, it keep you in an atmosphere. And these are the kind of things I want to encourage. I mean, there are other songs, wordified songs, I call them. They have its place, it reminds you the message and the word and the knowledge and so on. But what you really want is the things to get you in the spirit, in the spirit, because the world spirit is very dominant. The prince of the power of the air is very dominant. You're fighting music, the atmosphere, people, the noise around, is demon activity everywhere because Satan have a last ride. Hallelujah. So you are fighting against hell and the earth. And that is why I had to press your way to get in the spirit. And that's why I certainly appreciate you being here tonight to hear this word tonight that we are bringing to you. So therefore, the seed word cannot grow in an atmosphere of knowledge. So, what Abraham was dramatizing here. He says, uh, you, you, you shall not surely die. You think that good loving father God would do a thing like that? What did she do? She listened to reason took his wisdom, a tree delight, one can desire of it to be wise, right? That will be sit and tell, uh, and, and so on, Eve. You see, the seed that she was holding and would have finally become a mother by the will of God through a spoken word would have finally become a mother, but she couldn't wait and went into that. Here you see it again. The Holy Ghost seeds of the Bible, I'll say it again. The Holy Ghost seeds of the Bible cannot grow in an atmosphere of wisdom. That kills every seminary in the country. So how does that line up with the Bible talking about in the last days, there shall be silly women laden with divers lust on the heap unto themselves, teachers having itching ears, ever learning, and never coming to the knowledge of the truth. Come like how the prophet says, when you see the message, the rest is filler material. When you really see the message. So I'm not trying to get filler material to kill time. We're not trying to kill time and stretch out like a long morby, a long drink and keep pouring water. No, no, no. We're trying to get to the core. What is this about? Because God has certain laws and certain principles. And if you see these principles and laws and live by them, then your life will be on the right track. It will be rightly channeled. Are you with me tonight? So therefore Eve was to believe the word as it was given to her. You know, I was doing something yesterday on the computer, I was to install a program or whatnot. And I find myself following instructions. What has given the internet, do this, do this. And afterwards I realized that I am following instructions to the letter. Because if you don't follow the instructions, you wouldn't get the results. If they say, do this, type in this, put in this here, do this here, erase this here, do this here, do this here. If you do the instructions, you'll get the results. And then when I did that, I said, look at that. Look how we could follow instruction because I am not a computer scientist. I am not a programmer. I am not a writer of code and whatnot. We don't know what they write in there. You know? We don't know what they have behind there. You know? We just doing what they say. Press this, say, agree to this, do this, do this, do this. And I'm telling myself, why is it that we can't take the word of God just like that? Just like that. God, you promised a revival? I, I want it. I'm looking for it. I'm expecting it. God, you promised to be a healer? Not, you know, 
you know, like, like I'm born sick. Like it's God's will for me to be sick. Not that kind of talk. I want you to say, I am going to be healed. Oh God, I must be pain for my sins. No, I don't want that kind of talk. I want to talk of redemption, blood, deliverance. This is what we want to hear. This is what we want to claim. This is what we ask. Oh God, I can hold. I go dead. Yeah, you go dead, but no, no. You can't claim that right now. You might even make the rapture before death hit you. So you can't go and anoint that. God heal people 90 years old, 92 years old. God called Abraham when he was old and bless Abraham and change his body and so on. So you have to be exercising your faith even in this coronavirus environment, right? You know, and, and, and we have to keep pressing on by God's grace. So let's continue tonight. So watch, I'll skip that now. Adam Bright could not wait. Multiply and replenish the earth. Here we go. And this is the part I want to get to. It was an, an uncommon thing, a promise. Remember I told you that God gave them the whole scope, whole scope, multiply, replenish, subdue, and different things like that, the whole scope. But it was an uncommon promise. And it comes like God promised third pull when he pressed come down, watch the third pull again, manifestation of God, spoken word, all these things. But we can't run as if that is what we have now. That is insane. It doesn't work that way. God told Samuel, anoint one of his sons of Jesse to be king. But David got saying, oh God, I get anointed. And David's sprinting down to the castle to tell Saul, you know, I'm king now. You know that was going to end, right? They was going to take his head off. So, so in other words, when God released the anointing of dominion, the anointing of authority, the anointing to be a manifested son, the anointing to be adopted son, because he has to do that first, eh? The anointing of your position, of your calling, have to come upon you. And that anointing is what helps direct you to where you're supposed to go. But before you reach the fulfillment of where the anointing want to carry you and take you and place you, you have to go through process. And this here is the law of the seed. The law of the seed, because the seed itself goes through process. You don't take a seed and say, uh, uh, I'm looking forward for fruit tomorrow. You know, you just planted yesterday. It doesn't work that way. A lot of people wish it was that way, but it doesn't work that way. When you put down a seed, you have to, W-A-I-T, you have to wait. That's where patience comes in. Because the seed demands that law of planting, waiting, unfolding, and that unfolding is the life of the seed is unfolding. Isn't that right? So this is the principle that God established since in the Genesis in the beginning. So he said, he told Adam and Eve, multiply and replenish the earth. It was an uncommon thing, a promise. So it wasn't it yet. I have it now. No, it was a promise. She was not his wife as yet because he had never lived with her. The bride of Christ is not his wife yet. So all this catchphrase, I'm the I and the bride, and all these nice fancy words, you see? When you already get down in the scriptures, you recognize that is not really what people think it is. The bride of Christ is not his wife yet. The wedding supper is to take place, okay? Now, she got in a hurry. She crossed her seed. She mingled with the serpent seed, and what did she bring? A child of debt. And she perverted every child after that. After that. Amen. So if you have a Bible, let's go to Matthew 13 and we go to the New Testament and we start to see how to unfold from here. Matthew 13, we want to read from verse 3. Matthew chapter 13, reading from verse 3. And he spake many things unto them in parables, saying, Behold, a sower went forth to sow. When he sowed, some seeds fell by the wayside. The fowl came and devoured them up. Some fell upon stony places where they had not much earth, and forthwith they sprung up because they had no deepness of earth. When the sun was up, they were scorched, and because they had no root, they withered away. Some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprung up and choked them. Some fell into good ground and brought forth fruit, some a hundredfold, some sixtyfold, some thirtyfold. Who had ears to hear? Let him hear. 
verse 10. And the disciples came and said unto him, why speakest thou unto them in parables? He answered unto them, because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it is not given. For whosoever hath to him shall be given, and he shall have more abundance. But whosoever hath not from him shall be taken even that he hath. Now in the Amplified, that scripture, that's verse 12, it reads, for whosoever has spiritual knowledge, to him will be given, will more be given, and he will be furnishedly richly so that he will have abundance. But from him who has not, even what he has will be taken away. So let's continue to verse 13. Therefore speak I unto them in parables, because they see and see not, hearing they hear not, neither do they understand, and in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah, which said, by hearing you shall hear, shall understand, and seeing you shall see, and shall not perceive. For this people's heart, hear why, hear why, Isaiah's prophesied, for this people's heart is wax gross, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes they have closed, at least at any time they should see with their eyes, hear with their ears, should understand with their heart, should be converted, and I would heal them. But blessed are your eyes, for they see, and your ears, for they hear. For very I say unto you, that many prophets and righteous men have desired to see those things which ye see, have not seen them, and to hear those things which ye hear, and have not heard them. Verse 18, hear ye therefore the parable of the sower. And then Jesus went to break it down to them. Now I could say tonight, blessed are your ears, what you hear and your eyes, what you have seen. You have seen God release a 20th century prophet with a pillar of fire. You have seen God release a message in this hour and revelation that even in ages gone past did not have. You have seen the fulfillment of what God told Daniel, go thy way, the book is sealed till the time of the end. People take it for granted now about books and the tapes and the revelation but the fact is, all through the ages was waiting for this hour, the return of the book, which is the title deed of the earth, back on the sands. And it's so strange and unique that God, the only way God could get this book to us, not just as written or as spoken, but as a seed. And that's why God told God to the prophet said, the end time messenger he would sow the seed of the entire Bible. And the secret is what? The word is in the bride. So therefore, it took some time, but God's interest was to get the word into you. Because the Pentecostal, and I remember preaching on it some time ago, with dynamics, which was power, which was the anointing, they couldn't come to adoption because they did not have the seed. So it's not so much the rain, you know, it's what's seed in you, because the rain is coming. Nobody can stop that. Today was quite a rainy day here in Trinidad. Nobody can stop the rain and say, put an umbrella and block the whole sky and block the rain. No, the rain coming. But it's coming on seeds. It's which kind of seed? It's what kind of seed? Because we have a sower. We have the seed and we have the ground. Now the sower is connected with the seed because the sower is the one who sows the seed. And when you hear son of man, you know who he is, right? He's the sower. He has the sower of the good seed. And that is what Jesus came in his last day to do. He came to a prophet to bring seed, not just seed, but original seed, which is the spoken word. And you know, you see men, ministers, pastors, and whoever else, give a lot of interpretation and their ideas because they feel quoting from the prophet is not good enough. It needs a long stretcher, you know, like rubber band and you pull it and you spin it and everything else. But the thing of it is, if we believe God was veiled in that Elijah and spoke out through that man, that means what came out of his mouth was spirit given or spirit spoken words. The spirit itself spoke those words. And the words itself are seeds. Let there be, let there be, let there be, let there be. So what you have been receiving is not the words of a man. You have been receiving the words of the son of man. Spirit given words. 
Now when, here we go, when the spirit come back to find out and to hunt for those seeds, oh glory, hallelujah. When, when the Holy Ghost comes back, he will be looking for the very seeds that were spoken and released by the sower. Because Brother Branham, he brought part of it was historical because a lot of mysteries was missed back there that has absolutely nothing to do with the bride. That has to do with information of revelation that was not understood. So if we talk about serpent seed and we talk about uh, 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 other mysteries that have back there, we we'll come like, okay, the seeds have been opened. First seal, white horse, red horse, pale, pale horse, white horse, red horse, and so on like that. That is history. Fourth seal, prophecy, fifth seal, Jews, sixth seal, judgment. What concerns us is the seventh seal. Not first seal, that's information. It have revelation under there, it have understanding over there, it have inspiration under there, but that's not, that's not the seal for the bride then. The end time seal is the seventh seal. So therefore the seed of the entire Bible had to be released under the seventh seal for the end time bride. All the mysteries had to be gathered up into a revelation of the son of man. So that is why he said Malachi 4 came to open six seals. It's all gathered up into a revelation of son of man, the sower. So once we cover the past, which is the historical past, which is the church ages past, then you recover the son of man. It comes like the son of man lost. He, he get deleted, he get erased. That's the first age. Son of man, sow seeds. The seeds that he sow become flesh and was made manifest in the book of Acts. So it wasn't like a book seed. It wasn't like Peter had spoken with books under his and explaining and explaining and talking. They were the living word. They were the seeds itself. They were the word manifesting. Could we say amen tonight? So therefore, when it, the seed fell in Nicaea and fell into the ground under the promise of I will restore canker worm, caterpillar, locust, and palmer worm, it took four moves. Justification, sanctification, baptism of the Holy Ghost, and the word itself. It took Luther Wesley, the Pentecostal, and it took Malachi for prophet to come and bring the word itself. To bring us back on point, to prepare for rain, or prepare for manifestation, or prepare for fulfillment, the seed we're talking about. So let me see if I could just hasten a bit now. But um, Jesus, I, I think we should verse 18 here, Hear ye that therefore the parable of the sower. When one heareth the word of the kingdom and understand it not, then cometh the wicked one, cast it away, that which was sown in his heart. This is he which receives seed by the wayside. So the first one is wayside. The wayside people, wayside people, wayside church members. They're hearing and the devil just snatching things from them and they are seized up by the wayside. Verse 20, he that receiveth the seed into stony places, the same is he that heareth the word, and anon receive, with joy receiveth it. Yet he hath not root in himself, but drew it for a while, and it for a while, and when tribulation or persecution ariseth, because of the word, by and by he's offended. He also that receives seed among the thorns is he that heareth the word, and the care of those this world, and this deceitfulness of the riches choke the word, and become unfruitful. But he that receiveth seed into the good ground is he that heareth the word, understandeth it, also bear fruit, bring it forth 104, 60, 30. All right. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I want to go to Luke 8. We want to take it from dear because it brings a different uh, picture. Uh, same story, but we just have the condensed part. Luke 8, reading from verse 14 to 18. We want to go and find it. Luke chapter 8, verse 14 to 18. And after tonight, we're going to put this uh, this this um, thing that we're sharing here on the WhatsApp group that you could get. You could always go, go this over. Luke 8, 14 to 18. Jesus speaking. And that which fell among thorns. So I'm going to start from the thorns in Luke 8. That which fell among thorns, a day which... When they are heard, go forth 
and are choked with cares and riches and pleasures of his life and bring no fruit to perfection. So, 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 so this didn't come out that way in, in the last scripture we read there, but this is what brought out here. The thorns, all right? The thorns are they which, when they are heard, go forth and are choked. Now, the thorns, it grows. It start to produce, but because of cares, riches, and pleasures of this life, bring no fruit to perfection. So this word, fruit to perfection, is loud. It is big, because you can't get nothing with the wayside. It just fall, and they're gone. You can't get much with the stony. Now, don't talk about perfection around stony at all. They're shouting and jumping and happy, 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 and then they disappear. The last two, and bear in mind, we say in wayside, we say in stony, we say in tawny, and we say in good ground. All of these four categories represent heart condition or the ground. So you have wayside ground, stony ground, tawny ground, and good ground. So all of these, these four categories represent heart condition. Nothing is wrong with the word or nothing is wrong with the seed. So let's continue, verse 15. But, th but that on the good ground are they which in an honest and good heart, having heard the word, keep it and bring it forth fruit with patience. No man, when he lighted a candle, covered it with a vessel or put it under a bed, but set it on a candlestick that they which enter may see the light. For nothing in secret that shall not be made manifest, neither anything hid that shall not be known come abroad. Take heed therefore how you hear, how you hear, for whosoever hath to him shall be given, and whosoever hath not, from him shall be taken even that which he seemeth to have. The Amplified of that last verse said, be careful therefore how you listen. For to him who has spiritual knowledge will more be given, and from him who does not have spiritual knowledge, even what he thinks and guesses and supposes that he has will be taken away. So here tonight, we have the waysides, the stonies, the tawnies, and the good ground. And I want you to understand tonight, perfection is only coming out of the last group, good ground. This is Brother Branham, and he's saying this from the third Exodus. The seed that falls upon dry ground or upon rocks, it will never do nothing. Hard, stony heart that wants to be indifferent. You ever encounter people who just want to be different? They like to be different. You say A, they ball B, you say apple, they ball, you know, they just don't want to be in harmony. They want to argue. They want to fight. They want to be on the other side. If you say up, they say down. If you say in, they say out. They just want that, they're just indifferent them. They're not looking to harmonize. They're looking how they could be so, you know, and this difference is what's going to set them apart. And in trying to be indifferent, they're off key, they're off beat. And then the prophet talk about people who you don't want to be around. They don't make you feel comfortable. They don't make you feel welcome. Their spirit is not welcoming. Their spirit is indifferent. Now their face might have a smile, they might be normal, they might be looking normal, but what they give out, their spirit atmosphere. And that is where, like the Pentecostals, Baram says, was the restoration of the leaves. Because when the devil, he done the bark, the leaves, the fruit, first he attacked the fruit. After the fruit was the leaves, after these were the bark, which is the doctrine, the covering, and afterwards his life itself is what he eat. So he eat, eat right down. So then afterwards, God say, I'll restore. So he had to bring back the doctrine, which is the covering. Then he bring back the branches, the leaves, you get fruit yet, you clap in, hallelujah, glory, glory, glory. So therefore the cactus behavior that people have, where they have spikes on their lives. And when they get close to them, ouch, because it's not a flowing life, it's not an atmosphere of welcome. This is the spirit of indifference. So he said, no, but if it fall upon soft, mellow ground of faith, it will bring forth a Christian 
bearing fruits of the spirit. Then he says, some of the green wheat fell on ground, the birds picked it up, and others fell among thorns, and some was went on prepared ground or pre-prepared ground. So he, the last group, Rabbi might identify as pre-prepared ground. Now, Jesus, you notice, no man can come to me except my father draws him. All the father give me will come. He said, now, here is the predestinated plan is in plain view. This should make a shout tonight. Just as other seed, the word of God is a seed and must have the ground prepared beforehand. Do you know that the seeds in Genesis was in the earth, under darkness? And when God said, let there be light, the light came and bring that seed to life. So do you know that your heart has been prepared before? Let me, let me read it. Let me read it. If this to excite you, I, do, I don't know what will. Therefore, if you sow seed, just throw it anywhere in the ground. It will do no good. The birds will pick it up. You throw it among thistles and thorns, it will choke up pretty soon. Jesus' parable said so. So the ground has to be made ready first. Okay? Your ground has to be made ready first. And he says now, he prepared you, oh my. So, so God in sovereign grace prepares the heart first. He prepared you before the foundation of the world to receive him in this age. He foreknew you by his foreknowledge and ordained you to eternal life. He knew you, therefore he prepared you. Oh, give the Lord some praises tonight. Just, just stop right where you are right now and raise your hands and give God some praises. He foreknew you. That is why he prepared you to receive this word in this last day. The Baptist couldn't hold you. The Methodist couldn't hold you. Catholic couldn't hold you. And the Cossack couldn't hold you. You had to come out because you're, he prepared you and because he knew you. Oh my, bless, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, tonight. And then he said this here, that is the reason you staggered out of these things and staggered into what you have now. It was God leading you to the place where he has ordained for you to be. If this ground isn't prepared beforehand, it can't grow. And that's the reason the seed of faith, when you are preaching faith, see the discernments of the Lord and see what takes place, all the gifts of the Bible working, people working themselves up. How do I believe it? And come up, find yourself disappointed. The ground has to be foreordained and you know when it strikes it. So I want to say it again. Perfection could only come to this last group. And the Lord told Brother Branham, pick up a pen and write. And God gave him these words. He says, what I'm trying to say to you, the law of reproduction is to bring forth of its kind. Genesis 1.11. In these last days, the true bright church comes to the headstone. Will be a super race, a super race, a super church. As she nears the headstone. Here we go. There will be so much like him in his very image in order to be united with him. Now we know what the image is, right? Faith, virtue, knowledge, temperance, patience, godliness, really kind of charity. Such a perfect man, right? They will be one. They will be the very manifestation of the word of the living God. I'll just skip a little bit. The first son was spoken seed word of God, first son. He was given a bride to produce himself. See, she fell. The bride was given the purpose to produce himself again, another son of God. She fell by high breeding and it caused him to die. The second son, talking about Jesus now, a spoken seed word of God was given a bride like Adam. And before he could marry her, she was fallen. She was put to free more agency like Adam's wife to believe God's would and live. And she doubted or doubted and died. She did. Here we go. Then from Yahweh, a little group of the true seed of the word, God will present Christ, a beloved bride, a virgin to his word. Notice he's not talking about church. He's talking about the word now, the true seed of the word. And through them, this bride, and by them, the bride, who will be fulfilled all that have been promised for his word in the virgin who knows no man-made creeds or dogmas. The word of promise is in, in himself, like it was in Mary, God himself made manifest. Here we go, here the prophecy. He will act himself by his own word of promise so to fulfill 
what has been written of him. He said they will love him and will have his potentials for he is their head and they are his subjects, subject to his head, headship of Christ as his. Notice what harmony. Jesus never did anything until he seen of the father or the father showed him first. This harmony between God and Christ in John 5, 19, so will the bride. He show her his word of life. He shows her, she receives it. She never doubts it. Nothing can harm her, not even death. Let me say it again. This bride, nothing can harm her, not even death. For if the seed be planted, the water will raise it up again. And I got a big, great hallelujah. Here is a secret. The word is in the bride and the mind of Christ to know what he wants done with the word. Now, that mind of Christ there is the intelligence. So that is charity. That is dynamics. That will be the capstone. That will be the supreme anointing coming down upon the bride to show her what he wants done with the word. And she does it in his name. She has thus said the Lord. Then it is dramatized. So the Holy Spirit waters it until it's grown and serve its purpose. Aha, here it is again. So she has thus said the Lord one. Then it is dramatized. So it's starting from seed. So the Holy Spirit waters it. One so another water, but God gives the increase. Waters it until it is grown and serves its purpose. They only do his will. This is the bride now. They only do what? His will. No one can persuade them different. They have thus said the Lord, but they keep still. Then they will do the works of God, for it is, is himself in them, continuing his word to fulfill as he did complete in his days. As he, he did complete in his days. Oh, blessed be the Lord. Give him some praises tonight. Give him some worship tonight. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. Now, it's so unique in one of the texts, I believe it was Matthew, same chapter 13, and we're going to get back to it. Right after Jesus gave this parable and he explained this parable of the sower, he dropped another parable on them. And if you want to find it, that's Matthew 13, verse 24. Very interesting how he did this. So he identified in the first parable we read, the sower, the parable of the sower, of these four heart conditions. Wayside hearts, stony hearts, thorny hearts, and heart that is good ground. The other scripture we pick up in Luke show that the, 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 the thorny cannot bring fruit to perfection. So we know that once you allow, listen carefully, once you allow the cares of life, riches, pleasures to tie you up, you're not really getting fruit to perfection. You might get some kind of fruit, yes, but not what is required. So what is required by God, fruit to perfection, some bring 34, 64, 100 fold. But Jesus brought another parable, Matthew 13, reading from verse 24 to 30. And another parable he put forth saying to them, the kingdom of heaven is like not a man which sowed good seed in his field. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tears among the wheat and went his way. And when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit, then appeared the tears also. So the servants of the householder came and said unto him, Sir, didst thou, thou so good feel seed in thy field? From whence then had the tears? He said unto them, An enemy had done this. The servant said unto him, Will thou then that we go and gather them up? He said, Nay, at least while you gather up the tears, you root up the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest. And in the time of harvest, I will say to the reapers, gather ye together, first the tears, bind them in bundles to burn them, but gather the wheat into my own barn. So this here is a different thing altogether. This here is Jesus sharing that another seed was introduced after the good seed was sown. Let me say it again. Another seed was introduced after the good seed was sown. This is what happened in Genesis. We put Adam, a seed, a pull out Eve, a rib, they fell, and then all of a sudden you get another seed. And that is why with Cain, when Seth was born, the Bible said, and God has given him another son, 
that Seth replaced Abel that died. It wasn't that Seth was Cain's brother. Seth replaced Abel. So God have a way of getting it right in terms of his purpose will stand regardless. His purpose for your life will stand regardless, regardless of what trap, what smears, what failures, what shortcomings. Once your name is on that book and God has elected you in this hour for that eternal life, nothing will stop the purpose of God in your life. Do you believe that tonight? Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. Let's look at Matthew chapter 13. And let's continue verse 36, where Jesus explained this parable. Verse 36 to 43, we're going to read Matthew 13. And then, then Jesus sent the multitude away, went into the house. And his disciples came unto him, saying, Declare unto us the parable of the tears of the field. He answered and said to them, He that sowed the good seed is the son of man. Pulsai. Make no mistake about it. Good seed, son of man, in charge of that. He's his sower. Anytime you see son of man, you have good seed. The field is the world. And here we go. The good seed are the children of the kingdom. So do you see how God see you tonight as a good seed? Could we give the Lord a shout on that one tonight? Right in your room, right in your house. He said, watch. The field is the world. The good seed are the churn of the kingdom, but the tears are the churn of the wicked one. The enemy that sow them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the world and the reapers are the angels. As therefore the tears are gathered and burning the fire, so shall it be in the end of this world. The son of man shall send forth his angels and she shall gather out of his kingdom all things that offend and them which do iniquity, and they shall cast them into a furnace of fire. They shall be wailing, gnashing of teeth. Then shall the righteous shine forth as a sun in the kingdom of their father, who had air let him hear. But a brother, he said, notice in verse 41, the two are very close in the last days. He could not depend on some certain church to separate them, Methodist, Baptist, Pentecostal. No, he said he will send his angels to separate them. An angel, is coming to bring the separation, the separation between right and wrong. And no one can do that but the angel of the Lord. He's the one that's gonna tell which is right, which is wrong. And God said he will send his angels at the last time, not angels down through here, but angels at the last time, and he would gather together. We know at the coming harvest time, an angel is really a messenger. And we see there are seven angels of the seven churches to the church ages. Notice, who he said that the sowers were. Also what the seed was. The sower was he, the son of God, who went forth sowing seed. An enemy came behind him, which was the devil. He sowed a seed of discrepancy behind the sowing of the right seed. And friends, that has happened to every age since we have had a world, all the way from the beginning. Now he said the seed of God, the word of God, and Jesus said in a certain place that the word is a seed. And every seed will bring forth after its kind. Hallelujah. Now, if the Christian, the children of God, the children of the kingdom has become the seed of God, then they must be the word of God. Okay. Now, if you stop right there, it would look like just word, seed, almost like if it's text and just knowledge and information. But this is what continues here. I'll say it again. If the children, the children of God, the churn of the kingdom has become the seed of God, then there must be the word of God, the word of God manifested in the age that they're living in for the promised seed of that age. God gave his word at the beginning and each age has its seeds, its time and its promises. Now, when Noah come forth, he was the seed of God, the word of God for that age. When Moses come, he could not come with Noah's message. It wouldn't work because it was the seed of God at that time. And when Christ come, he could not come at Noah's age or Noah's time message, no. So we have lived through Luther's age, Wesley's age, all down through the ages, the Pentecostal age, and each age has given a promise of the word. And the people of that age, here we go, that manifest that promised word is the seed of that age. Let that sink a little bit. The people of that age that manifest that promised word is the seed of that age according 
to what Jesus said here. They are the children of the kingdom. And then he made a statement. The manifestation of the Holy Spirit operating through his children is those seed of the kingdom at that time. All right. So watch. The sower come to sow a seed. But that seed have to unfold. That seed have to ripen, mature, die, unfold until it becomes manifested. And the manifestation of the Holy Spirit operating in those children are the seeds. So all of a sudden, it changes from what the sower sow to the seed being made manifest in your life. Could we say amen? Oh, hallelujah. Do you understand that? So after, it's not the seed in the Bible. It's not the seed in the spoken word books. The seed, you become the seed manifested or the word manifested, or you become the living word itself. And that makes you the seed for the age. The sower, the seed, the ground. Now for this process to work, this spoken word, which is what came out the mouth in Revelation 10, Seven thunders utter their voices. It, it, it roar out. That is what catch the bride. Them thunders. That is what gives the bride faith. Those thunders. That is what showed the bride how to be paid. Those thunders. It came out from the mouth of God. Not some man in America. The mouth of God. The mighty angel. The one with the sweat back wings. The one with the seven seed. That spoken word is the seed that comes into you. And that seed is Joseph perfection seed. Oh, glory. You're excited tonight. That seed has to begin to work itself out to bring you into perfection because that is where this sowing is about. No farmer is sowing not to reap. No farmer is sowing not to have a harvest. Every single farmer that sows looking for a harvest. This is the law since in Genesis. Nobody are planting and they expect nothing. It's just that sometimes it falls on the wayside, but it's taken. Sometimes it falls on the stones. They jump up for a while and dry up. Sometimes they fall among thorns. But what he's really interested in is the good ground. Because on the good ground is where you'll get fruit. Some 34, some 64, some 100 fold. All may not bring forth at the same measure, but fruit is guaranteed on the good ground. Listen, it is guaranteed on your good ground. Oh, could we give you some praises tonight? I hope this encourages you. And let's continue now. Now the grain seed in the original fell on Nicaea. It was the first denomination. Notice here, the life, here we go, that was in the stalk, in the tassel, now ends up in the seed. So not what he's talking here now is the unfolding of the life. The devil crushed the church to the dark ages. It went on the ground. The devil said, they finish. That time we know coming up, the life began to unfold. To the tassel, the stalk. No, the original is the seed. The tassel is not like the seed. The stalk is not like the seed. But the life has to unfold. And this life unfolding is the revelation of the seven church ages. So put it simply, the revelation of the seven church ages is the revelation of the unfolding life of the seed to seven ages. Where the seed goes on in the ground and actually it unfolds itself until they come back to the seed in the last days. That is why this message had to be perfect. This message had to be perfection because it has to come back to the original. So only gift could bring this message in his last day was a prophet because the word of the Lord come to the prophet. And the spoken word of God, which is original seed, have to come from the mouth of God. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceed out of the mouth of God. So God's mouthpiece was a prophet that had to be on the earth to bring spirit given word, word that cannot be challenged because it's thus saith the Lord. So what we have tonight is a thus saith the Lord message, despite all the craziness on the internet and negging Brother Branham and negging what he did and, and negging the message, we, despite all of that, this message is true. It will come to pass. Oh, praise all the prophecy that was spoken shall surely come to pass. So let's, conti let's, let's continue. The life that was in the store, castle, ends up in the seed. The life that comes out of the original seed comes through different processes, three different processes. 
and then turned back in its original condition. And then Baram said, hallelujah, oh my, I am the happiest person in the world that God will let me see this. Watch how perfect the word and nature works together. The life that was in the husk, in the stalk, in the tassel, gathers up in the seed and the life that was in the stalk, one went to make the other. Then he says this here, justification made a way for sanctification. Sanctification made a way for the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And the baptism of the Holy Ghost made a way for the Holy Ghost itself to come down, right down in perfection and back to the word. My, 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 my. Oh, give him some praises. Give him some praises tonight. Wow. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. Keep worshiping them saints. Praise be to Jesus. Devil is alive tonight. Wow. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. All of a sudden, it seems like everything that uh, seems to have just disappeared just like that. This is really kind of weird, but God is good. All right, we see what's happening here now. All right. Okay, here we go. So watch. No, okay. So justification, we made a way for sanctification. Sanctification made a way for the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And the baptism of the Holy Ghost made a way for the Holy Ghost itself to come right down in perfection and back to the word again to manifest itself. So, so, so he's saying that we have got to come to this where we get to connect back with the Holy Ghost itself, not the gift of the Holy Ghost, but the Holy Ghost itself. So here we go. Now the tassel or the pollen, then the husk, then the husk comes the original seed, not a seed. It was the life of the seed growing through this to come to the seed. Do you see it? What is it? A resurrection coming back to a masterpiece again. Pentecost came out of Wesley because Wesley was an organization. Pentecost came out as no organization, then turned to one. It had to, to make the husk. The true word of life on it was on its way to the original green through these stages, through the stalk, through the pollen, into the husk, and then it was made seed. Now, let me wrap up here. The stalk, tassel husk, they produce, they were a holder of a certain portion of that seed life. But when they organize, life move out of it. How many understand that when the churches denominate and life leave them, there is no way for God to get back in because God could only move by the word. So when a man put an interpretation to the word, the spirit can't move. It's almost like if you switch from an electric wire and put a pipe, put a PVC pipe. Current can't flow through the PVC pipe. So it comes like you cut the line and you replace the, 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 the line to carry the current with some other line. That is what interpretation does. That is why the Holy Ghost was born at the river Euphrates by creeds and dogmas because God couldn't come back in. The dogmas will not allow him to move back in. The only way God can move back in is to get back on the word. And that is why he's talking about this angel, right? The manifestation of the Holy Ghost is that angel trying to get the people back to the word because he could only manifest the word. He could only work through the word. So all these years, God has been trying to protect us from interpretation, man's idea, man's influence. Number six now, number six, I'd like to reign and rule over others and have no temperance himself. So therefore that has been challenged and that is the whole Nicolaitan spirit anointing, the Pope anointing, the Rome anointing, the Bishop, Archbishop and the Iraqi anointing that lap over into the message and influence so many lives wrongfully. Because you see, the bride is not the bride of a man, it's the wife of the lamb. That's who you are tonight. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. So let's, co let's continue here now. Notice, the seed is coming up. That life is coming up, not going back. There'll be no more resurrection after this. The life is coming up to go its, into its perfection, a resurrection. So you could now understand why Brother Branham says, without perfection, there's no resurrection. 
think about it now. Not church now. We have to come to perfection, which is that Joseph seed made manifest. Okay, let me on your home church right now. Okay. To understand this subject more clearly, it will now be wise to approach it from the standpoint of the church through the ages. Up until now, we have been thinking in terms of removal of names of individuals. Now we want to consider not the individuals, but the groups represented in the church. To do so, we would liken the church through the ages to the wheat plant. A grain of wheat is planted to the end that a single grain of wheat will reproduce and multiply itself through a certain process during a certain period of time. That single seed will die, but in dying, the life that was in it will come up into a plant, which in turn will be the bearer or carrier of that life, which is to come back to originality in a multiplied form. Jesus, the great royal seed, died. That matchless one, who is the life of the church, stands in the midst of the church for all seven church ages, giving his life to the church, the carrier or the bearer, to the end, his very life will be reproduced in bodies like unto his in the resurrection. It is at the resurrection that the royal seed will see many royal seeds like unto himself. And they will be even as he is, for so says John, we shall be like him. That is what John was referring to. Now, the record of this week plan, here we go, whose end is to reproduce the original seed in multiplied form is the book of life. He talked about the record. I repeat. And this is the bomb. The history or the record of this wheat plant is the book of life, of which a part of the book of life is the record of eternal life, a section of the book of life. This is convincingly seen by examining the wheat plant. A bare seed is sown, soon a blade is seen, but that is not the wheat yet. Then it grows into a stalk, that is not yet the wheat. Life is there, but not the wheat. Then at the end of this talk is a little spike that sends out a tassel, still a wheat plant, but no wheat yet. Then the plant is pollinized. We see the chaff grow. This looks mighty like the wheat, but is not yet seed. Then forms the wheat in the husk. It is now back to what is originally. Now the wheat is ripened, the ripened wheat is harvested. Now Jesus Christ died, he gave his life, that life was to come back upon the church and bring many sons like him unto himself into the glory of the resurrection. But as the wheat seed had to have a carrier, here we go, to bring forth multiplied wheat seed, even so there had to be a church which would be the carrier of the life of Christ. As the blade, stalk, tassel, and husk were the carriers for the seed, but not the seed itself. Oh, <coughs> excuse me. So the church corporate, through the ages has been the carrier of the true seed, do not the seed itself. That is why we can say the book of life is the whole wheat plant. Let's go it over again. Here is the original wheat plant that was planted. It produced a blade, that wasn't it. It produced a stalk, not it either. They come the husk, which is wheat, is to a form, that isn't it. The tassel appears and then the pollen falls on those pistils. Part of that plant is quickened something of that original seed that came up. To the rest of the plant turns into a seed. Why didn't the whole plant go into seed? Because it was created to that end. Just part of that plant can go back to being seed because just that part of that wheat plant is eternal life wheat. You have a perfect type. Israel, even Egypt, they all came out two million strong, all escaped the sacrificial blood, all were baptized at the Red Sea, all came up the water enjoying Holy Ghost manifestation, all ate angel food, all drank of the rock that followed them. Yet, except for a few, they were not but carriers of the children who should follow them and go into the Carrick Canaan land. All Israel is not Israel, just a tiny minority, but their names are blotted out of the Book of Life. We had the same thing today in church. Names are going to be blotted out of the Book of Life. No names will be blotted out of the Book of Eternal Life, but that is another record, do contain in the Book of Life. This is the record. God had given us eternal life, and that eternal life is in his son. He that had the son had life eternal. He that had not the son had not life eternal. And those who have that life were in him before the foundation of the world. They were chosen in him before the foundation of the world, that great royal seed. Jesus Christ was planted, he died, and that life that was in him, here we go, oh glory, this is great. That life that was in him 
came up through the wheat plant and is reproducing itself in multitudes of wheat seeds having the same life in them and being like the original. Here we go. Because by spirit, they are original. Not by book, but by spirit, they are original. So to go to back to perfection, we have to go back to the original spirit, which come by the original word, which produced the original seed. So the original seed brought the channel of the original word that the spirit could flow. And that is why in adoption, he says, where God can say, dear is my spirit flowing freely. Because the man have no hidden agenda, no hidden motive, no hidden, object, no hidden objective. The man is just a pipe. And the word make him that pipe because he dialed to himself and he become a pure channel of communication for inspiration to flow through. So God could say, there is my spirit flowing freely. I uh, find one. I look at find the next one here. I look at find the next one here. I look at find another one here. I'm gonna do it with church. I'm gonna do it with camps. I in this camp and that next camp. It's not with that. I have to do a man on God and the word of God. Okay. So let me see if we can it's the home stretch here right now. Now here we are coming to a conclusion. As the eternal logos God was manifested in the Son, and in Jesus dwelt all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. And that eternal one was the Father manifest in flesh and thereby gained the title of Son. So we, here we go, eternal in his thoughts, in our turn, became the many membered spoken word seed manifest in flesh. And those eternal thoughts now manifest in flesh are the sons of God, even as we are so called. We did not become seed by the rebirth. We were seed and therefore were reborn for only the elect can be reborn because we were seed is a reason we could be quickened. In non-seed, there is nothing to quicken. Oh, give the Lord some praise on that. Oh, glory to God, the Holy Ghost doesn't make you seed. It's because you are seed, you can be reborn. All right. Revelation chapter 14, reading from verse 12. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Right, blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from henceforth. Ye see the spirit, that they may rest from their labors, and their works do follow them. And I looked, and behold, a white cloud, and upon the cloud was one sat like unto the Son of Man, having on his head a golden crown. And listen to what he has, and in his hand a sharp sickle. And another angel came out of the temple, crying with a loud voice to him that sat on the cloud, trust in thy sickle and reap, for the time is come for thee to reap, for the harvest of the earth is ripe. Verse 16, and he that sat in the cloud, trust in his sickle on the earth, and the earth was reaped. And another angel came out of the temple, which is in heaven, he also having a sharp sickle. And another angel came out of the altar, which had the power over fire, and cried with a loud cry to him that had the sharp sickle, saying, Trust in thy sharp sickle, and gather the clusters of the vine of the earth, for her grapes are fully ripe. And the angel, trusting his sickle unto the earth, gathered the vine of the earth, and cast it into the great winepress of the wrath of God. And the winepress was trodden without the city, and blood came out of the winepress, even unto the horse's bridle by the space of a thousand and six hundred furlong. Chapter 15, verse one. And I saw another sign in heaven, great and marvelous, seven angels having the seven last plagues, for in them filled up the wrath of God. So I want you to see how God sees the earth. As seeds planted, sickle coming to harvest, harvest the wheat and harvest the tears. James 5, we're going to read verse 7 and we're going to close. Verse 7 to 10. Be patient, therefore, brethren, unto the coming of the Lord. I want to encourage you to be patient. Behold, the husbandman waited for the precious fruit of the earth and had long patience for it until he received the early and latter rain. Be also patient. Establish your hearts. For the coming of the Lord draweth nigh. 
Grudge not one against another, brethren. This be condemned. Behold, the judge standing on the door, before the door. Take, my brethren, the prophets who have spoken in the name of the Lord for an example of suffering, affliction, and patience. And I'm closing. Hosea 10, 12 says, sow to yourselves in righteousness, reap in mercy, break up your fallow ground, for it is time to seek the Lord till he come and rain righteousness upon you. Sow to yourselves in righteousness, reap in mercy, break up your fallow ground. That ground is the uncultivated, uncultivated areas in your heart. Break it up. What is not cultivated? The stony parts of your life. The hard part. You know, we talk about the softness of faith, that the, the, the atmosphere that the seed could grow in. It is time to seek the Lord. Remember Luke 8, 15. But that on good ground are they which in an honest and good heart, having heard the word, keep it and bring it forth fruit with patience. There's two more we finish. Romans 8 says 22. For we know the whole creation grown it and travail it in pain together until now. Not only they, but ourselves also, which are the first fruit of the Spirit, even we ourselves, grown within ourselves, waiting for the adoption to wit the redemption of our body. For we are saved by hope, but hope that is seen is not hope. For what a man see, what yet that he hope for. Our last scripture tonight from Hebrews 12, it says, Wherefore, and here we go, saints, church. All of you here tonight, listen closely as we wrap up tonight. Wherefore, seeing we have also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us. And let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of faith, who for the joy that was set before him endure the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Tonight, I want you to consider and look at your own self in the mirror to see what type of heart you're dealing with, whether it's wayside, stony, thorny, or good ground. With the good ground, you can be patient because that is what going to bring fruit to perfection, patient, on his heart, a good heart. And that's what God find to call you now. Now, we read the scripture in Hosea about break up the fallow ground. Bram talk about, sometimes people say, if the Lord will deliver me from this, if the Lord will take this evil spirit from me, if the Lord will do this, if the Lord will do that. He said, but it's up to you. There's a part that you have to do to deal with your own heart condition, to get your heart right, to get your heart soft, to get your spirit mellow, that your husband, you know, this thing about new heart and new spirit, he says, God give you a new spirit to, to see if he could get along with you, you know, because with the hard heart and the old spirit, the spirit of God can't even get along with that. So that's why he said, I, I take out your stony heart. I'll give you a new heart. I'll give you a new spirit. That new spirit is not the Holy Spirit. It's a new spirit. The birds sing in the front. They feel good. Everything. Else. But it's a new spirit. It's a new spirit to help you work with the Holy Spirit. But your promise is that third one, new heart, new spirit, his spirit. And this is where he want to get to. Let's bow heads with a prayer. Almighty God, tonight I thank you tonight for the grace and the help to share these words with your children, with your people about the sower, the seed, and the ground. Lord, the seed is perfect. We are not responsible for the seed, Lord. What we are really responsible for is how we tend to the ground, how we deal with the ground of our own hearts. Lord, one time you told the prophet, be more sincere. And he took time to fast and to pray. I pray, help us as we look towards that fast and it is coming Friday and to have that Zoom prayer meeting, Lord. Be with us, Lord Jesus. You told the disciples, not if you fast, but when you fast and how you must fast. May it become part of our lives, a full consecration, a full dedication, and that we not blame others on other things, but we accept responsible, responsibility for the part that we need to play in this hour. 
Father, I commit them into your hands tonight. I commit the tape that we play tomorrow night into your hands. I commit their lives into your hands. The Zoom prayer meeting, the day of prayer and fast is coming Friday and the service is coming on Sunday. God bless your children, bless the ministry, the officers, the elders, the deacons, the trustees, Father. Bless them, the laity, Father. May your spirit flow freely among your people tonight. May they leave you edified, strengthened. May they leave you with a special assurance and joy to know that you choose them, you foreknew them, and you prepare their hearts to receive your wilderness. What a blessed and privileged people we are. God, we are eternally grateful. Bless them tonight, and Jesus, we ask it. Amen and amen. God bless you, saints. Thanks for coming and have a great night. I trust tonight that this was a blessing to you. I trust it was edifying to you and you will be able to listen back and, and be blessed. Amen. God bless.